We shouldn't allow imperfections to stop us from trying. <laughs> Hi guys, thanks for coming to my channel. This is where we're going to be looking at audiobooks and how we can improve what we can do and what we can learn from some of the best audiobooks in the world. And I want to let you in on a little secret. If you're not a fast reader, I'm not either. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be conquering that with audiobooks. We can listen to the audiobooks. I'll show you how. And if you have any questions, let me know. So let's get into this. I look forward to going on this journey with you. Hi guys, so today we're going to be talking about Tiny Habits, which is a book that can help you understand why you might not be doing what you want to do and what you can do to do more of those habits and get those behaviours locked in so they become automatic or at least easier than they are now. This is the second book in my book review series and we're going to be reviewing Tiny Habits. So this will interest you if you've got a behaviour that you want to do, if you've got a habit that you haven't started yet, if you've got something that you know you want to do but you don't know how to do it. I'm going to be telling you what I learned from this book, sharing a few experiences of where it's worked and talking about how we can implement this moving forward. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, guys. If there's anything that you like, anything that you don't like, drop a comment, let me know. And I'm looking forward to going on this journey with you. Thanks for watching. I'm all about audiobooks, guys. If you, uh, if you read, phenomenal. I love listening to books. It's where my skill lies. And your skill might lie there too. So if you've not listened to an audiobook, maybe give it a go and let me know what you think. In this book, it's actually read by the author. And one of the things I love about audiobooks is it gives a little bit of personality that the author intends it to have. So this book was actually read by the author. And the start of the book, he highlights that he's had speech problems, he's had speech difficulties, and recording his own audiobook was a personal victory to himself that maybe at one point in time he didn't think he could achieve. It's all about how we can do what we think is impossible with tiny changes and incremental gains. So, so yeah, it's, it's really beautiful. The guy that wrote it is called uh, BJ Fogg. And I'm actually going to see if I can get an appointment with him uh, to have a 15 minute conversation. So if I do, I'll let you know. But he read his own audio book and he went through adversity to get there. So he's living what he's preaching, which is which is nice. He says that we shouldn't allow imperfections to stop us from trying. Um, it's all about iterations. It's all about making changes, having more of a growth mindset. So instead of something going wrong and us thinking that it's a personal comment on us and who we are as people, understanding that it could just be practice. It could just be that we're new to this behavior and that by repetition, by consistency, we can make seemingly impossible um, goals become a reality. He mentions that we should stop judging ourselves, stop being too critical and stop evaluating ourselves like we should be better. Understanding that it's about consistency and about putting in the work over time to get us there. But sometimes the goals can be too big. Sometimes the goals can seem out of reach. And what the tiny habits methodology does is it gives you um, simple steps that you can take to understand how you can get to the behavior you want. One of the main principles of this book is that people change best by feeling good and you can essentially shrink a behavior down into a tiny action. So if you want to do 100 press-ups a day but you can't, it can be a bit demoralizing when you try and fail. If you however say you want to do one press-up a day, you can do that maybe or you can make it easier to something that you can achieve and when you make it easier to achieve and you achieve it, even though it's tiny, it makes you feel good. And this is a self-reinforcing cycle upwards where by feeling good, we get better at it. We want to do it more. And this comes back to his point where he says, people change best by feeling good. So by doing a little action consistently, we'll start to feel good. Making the goal too big that we can't achieve it or having unrealistic expectations too soon could make us feel bad. And it has the opposite impact meaning we're less likely to do it and we don't feel good. So people change best by feeling good is a, is a lovely takeaway. Now, one of the points he mentions here is that we can start linking behaviours that we want to do with things that we already do. So, for instance, he mentions that when he uh, goes to the toilet, he does two press-ups because he can do two press-ups. That's easy for him. 
And by linking it to a behaviour he already does, he has a prompt that tells him or reminds him when he should do something. So is using things in your current um, surrounding to help you remember to do the things that you want to do. He says that most people try to motivate themselves to do something, but motivation is not the first thing that you can change. The simple equation that he says is B equals M A P. There we go. I think that might be upside down. So B equals M A P. And what B equals M A P means is behavior. What behavior do you want to do? And to do that behavior, you have to look at these three individual pieces. Motivation. Do you want to do it? Is this something that you would like to do? Ideally. If it is, brilliant. Ability. Can you do it? So imagine if this is um, applying for jobs. Motivation. Are you motivated to get a job? Yes, because you want the money or the security or the growth, whatever you're looking for. Then ability. Can you apply for jobs? Yes, it's humanly, physically possible for you to apply for jobs. If it isn't, then you can look into that. If it is humanly possible and you can do it, you know what to do, and it's not too hard. If you don't know how to apply for jobs, then it would be too hard. If you know where to go and what to do and how to push through that process, then you do have the ability. So you'd want the job because you're motivated. You have the ability to do the job because you know how to apply. So if you have the motivation and you have the ability, but you're not physically doing it, it could be the last option, P, which is prompt. Is there something in your situation, your circumstances, that prompts you to do it? So for BJ Fogg, he linked press-ups to going to the toilet. So he says, to get this uh, into full swing, we need to stop judging ourselves, to make sure we want to do it. Thirdly, we should embrace mistakes. He says that most people start with motivation, trying to motivate themselves to want to do something. <laughs> thanks for watching guys don't forget to like share and if you want to subscribe that'd be fantastic i'll be uploading the next video tomorrow at 6 p.m